What's up, guys? We have a legend on the show today. We have Jenna Burkett. She recently made the move to Blacksburg, Virginia. Uh, she will now be training with the Southeast RTC at Virginia Tech. A lot of drama going down lately with the women's wrestling. I'm um, excited to have her on, get some of her thoughts and opinions. Thanks for watching. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing good. It's been quite the week. Thanks for uh, all the support and all the tweets and everything that, you know, any little bit helps and you definitely have some traction in the wrestling world. So I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Good content is good content. So I, I was quite amused. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, hopefully people like what we're doing. Hopefully we're not coming off too negative. Um, first thing I was going to ask is, are we going, is that your dog Connor right there or, or is that not? Uh, so I have Nora and then Mila. Connor is, uh, he's outside right okay, now. And I noticed how you spelled it. Is that a, is that homage to Connor McGregor? It is. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I knew we were going to be friends. That's, that's my goat. That's my personal favorite fighter right there. And I noticed in, uh, I watched an interview that you did and you have the Irish tattoo as well. Are you Irish then? I, yeah, I'm Irish. So yeah. Connor McGregor fan? <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. He's, entertaining so i'm missing that he's retired again yeah, he'll be back. the champ champ will be back maybe we'll be a uh, champ 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 the triple champ um yeah i was watching some of your interviews or not interviews i was watching some of your matches this week ace fraley back in the new york groove did you pick that song oh absolutely yeah, yeah. i love that song it's, <laughs> i mean it's a pretty obvious it's a pretty obvious thing but why why that song oh my god it it um I like to not be too intense before my matches and you can see like when I'm walking out, it's uh, none of it's like an act. It's very genuine. I feel like that song puts me completely relaxed. I'm not thinking about what I want to do on the mat yeah. or anything outside. I'm just like, it makes me live in the moment and it's, you know, I'm from New York. So it's a perfect song for me. Yeah, I got a story about that song. I had a PE class when I was in high school. Our uh, PE teacher was a big music guy and he would always play this game where like you had to guess the song and he said uh is, if anybody can guess this song you guys don't have to do any exercises today and you can do what you want and he played that song within like two <laughs> seconds i was like ace fraley back in the new york groove slam dunk yep. uh, yeah when i picked that song everyone's like what is that i was like Ugh, peasants i think sometimes the too much <laughs> hyped up songs can be a little bit cliche like that's kind of like funky puts you in a good mood uh before your matches do you listen to music or no um, like not as I'm like walking out to my mat or like the, the five minutes before I like to just kind of Zen out. So I really don't have any music on. If I have my headphones on, it's usually off just so I don't have to like listen to anyone or no one will come up to me. <laughs> um, so yeah, not as much. I, I feel like each tournament, I always have a series of songs that I'm just like hooked on. Mm -hmm. And then every tournament's a little bit different, you know? Um, like last year's final acts, it was all like Halsey's new, uh, new song that she had put out. And so I was just like bumping that, but typically I don't have music like the five to 10 minutes before I match. Yeah. Is that, is that yeah. like, uh, just, you know, locked in, ready to go thing then? I think it's just like really about like staying in the moment for me. Like, I don't want to, sometimes I am scatterbrained. So if I have a song on my mind can kind of like think about too many different things or I, when I was younger, I used to try to put myself in like this warrior state of mind, like listening to the pump up music. And it's just like, that's just not me. It's just not, I don't need to like think about that because I'm so competitive that it's just like built mm -hmm. in, you know, of course I want to like destroy someone. I don't need to listen to music to get me pumped up for that. So it's just really about staying present and uh, really being mindful. And that's why I like to just kind of not have music to kind of just zen out. In my JV wrestling career, I used to listen to the pump up music and I have a lot of anxiety and that pump up music would just get my anxiety going and I would just like, just lose it mentally. And so I switched it up and started. Yeah. There's nowhere to stop. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I started listening to like Whitney Houston and that made me kind of realize like, this is just an, you know, this isn't really that big of a deal. It's just a thing, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> um, one of the, speaking of like trying to make it not a big deal, one of your quotes in an interview I watched, you said, it's hard for you to take wrestling serious because of your military experience um, and how there's other real life stressors out there. And so, you know, it kind of takes out the, 
you know, elevated status of a wrestling match if you know there's other bigger things going on in the world. Um, so you d- you said you d- it's hard for you to take it serious. Was that a Joker reference? Because this whole thing is why so serious. Yeah, I have that tattoo right here with the, the question of why so serious. Um, yeah, so I, I like to always implement that. I mean, I think when people know me, I think I'm very goofy. I like to make jokes all the time. And I, if people are too serious, I literally will always ask them that. That's how this whole like Joker thing even started way back when. Um, but the real, you know, like to that quote was just, it, you know, wrestling's very serious and it's all that, but it's not everything. And I like try to like, when I talk to younger athletes, I try to tell them to not put all their, you know, eggs in one basket because I've had, you know, things in my career where I've needed to take time off. I've gotten injured. And I think if you're just all in wrestling 24 seven, when you don't have wrestling because life happens, you don't have to do it yourself. And so for me, it's just like always a reminder that there's life after wrestling. Like I'm doing this in this very moment. And, you know, like, some one of my, uh, you know, battle buddies is on a deployment, you know, like, how can I take this moment for granted when there's always things harder? So that's a good, it's like always a good reminder. That's a great perspective. Um, your Twitter bio says Gotham city. You go by the Joker. Uh, I had this question read up. I've been doing homework like all week on you. And then yesterday (laughs) you go out and you freaking tweet this answer already. But for somebody who doesn't follow you on Twitter, which Joker is your favorite Joker? Oh my God. Heath Ledger. Yeah. yeah. All day, all day. It's like so obvious. <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix didn't sway you a little bit. No, he was really good. I mean, incredible acting. I, you know, I'm all about good acting. And so that movie, again, he was phenomenal. I love when characters really go all in, um, but it's just Heath Ledger. <laughs> I agree with you. I work in a barber shop, and this is like a reoccurring debate that we have. And some of the old school guys will say Jack Nicholson, which I was born in 94, so that's, I don't, I'm not really tied to that. I, you know, 2008, I was, yeah. that was like the prime of my, you know, junior high days. And so, um, he yeah. was the man. I watched so Pleasure. much. Yeah. I watched so much of the Jack Nicholson Joker and I do like what he brings to the table too. My brother is five years older than me and he's autistic. And so growing up, if there was a movie, my brother liked, it was like 24 seven, it was on repeat. So a lot of my favorite movies, even like Jurassic World and Jurassic Park um I used to hate when I was younger because my brother would play it over and over and over again um but now that I I don't live with my brother I like when I see these movies I can just repeat the words verbatim um so yeah I do like that I just like the Joker movies right so I just you know I'm about it (laughs) we left Jared Leto out of there because I I feel like we can kind of skip that that time period some people like him but not not me not so much um so (laughs) Enough with the Joker questions. Oh, by the way, I, I wore a Batman shirt for you. I don't know if you can see it in the in the Zoom camera. I like it. Yeah, I, I was trying to figure out all these different. I was like, because I try to wear a shirt that that matches like you know who I have on the Batman. I had to go for it. Oh, it's funny. Uh, so last week, kind of how you even found out about us, the whole Pat Downey flow uh, versus women's wrestling versus Greco versus everybody. Every the whole thing went on. Uh, you were giving us all the support. All this love. We talked a little bit behind the scenes. Uh, my mom called me. She's like, you got to get her on. You got to get her. I'm like, I'm working on it. Oh, it's so funny. She's me. a huge wrestling fan. <laughs> People are starting to find out her Twitter, t- too, because I told her, I was like, Mom, you can't like and retweet everything that I do because these guys are going to come after you. So she wants you on. I, you know, I told her. I surprised her. I was like, hey, I'm, she's coming on the show. Um, anyways. Uh, um, it's amazing. I try not to get into the typical – questions i try to do kind of different stuff here um i don't like to i hopefully not coming off boring or anything you put out your story after all that fiasco happened you put out your story on how you got into wrestling um i thought it was pretty interesting perspective um i live out here in iowa so wrestling is very heavily embedded in the culture out here um kind of talk about how you even realized there was like an all girls wrestling you know thing going on that was i thought that was cool yeah, it's it's so weird to like think back to that time because now like, you know, the internet and everything's just so accessible to you. Um, but I just remember growing up and every it was all boys team. Every, I'd never seen a girl wrestler. I didn't even think it I honestly didn't think it existed. I thought I was like magically somehow they won on the senior level. Um 
Darren Goldstein and he wrestled uh Recon Freestyle. So he he knew about it. And so when I was coming up, he started getting me in touch with different people. And then he looked up the organization like United States Girls Wrestling Association, which was the only thing you could do as a female. And the cool thing was you could go to different states because there wasn't many of us. So I have like a state title in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Let's like go. all up and down the yeah. East Coast. Um because I just like wanted matches. Yeah. And so when I went to my first one and I like, I, I remember walking in, it was cool because it was like a bowling alley and they put mats on top of it. And then there was like a random like boxing ring in the side. And I walked in and I saw all these girls and I was stunned. Yeah. And I just was like, I'm going to kill these girls. Yeah. You know, I literally didn't think they were going to touch me. And then my first match or like the second match of the day, uh, that's where my first loss of my career came was to a girl. And I got demolished. It wasn't even close. And I was devastated. And then that next match, you know, because you in the girl network, you've got to talk to these people so that you can continue on. And so his or uh, her uh, dad started coaching me because he knew my mom was just very honest. Like, clearly your daughter knows what she's doing. We have no idea. And he started coaching me. And then that's how, like, the amazing girls network, it's just like, no one's out to get you. Like we're always trying to grow the sport. And that was introduced to me at nine years old of we're not against each other. We're only going to get better if we all help each other. And so that's how that network started. And I'm still friends with these girls. Most of them don't wrestle anymore, but I would go up to their house in upstate New York and train with them for like two weeks and, and then drive back down to Long Island. So yeah, it was a really, really good experience and an eye opening. I got my butt kicked that day. Yeah. Speaking of getting yeah. your butt kicked, I remember like, you know, being a little kid and coming up in the circuit, like I, you always kind of go the same terms. You see the same kids. Was there ever like the same girl showing up and beating you all the time? And where is she at now? Um, you know, there was a lot of people that I, once I had started coming up, I just could never get matches with. And I really wanted to like, there was a girl, Hannah Martin, and she was like winning everything back in the day. And I was just like three pounds, like lighter or heavier, whatever tournament was. And I was always like, I was a little, little punk, you know, after I would wrestle like the tournament, I'd go up to them and we both be champions. I'd be like, Hey, do you want to do an exhibition with me? I'd ask anyone because I was just, I knew I was going to get to wrestle females very often. So as soon as we were at a tournament, I would do like three or four exhibition matches. And so she was one of them. And then Shelby Morrison, she doesn't wrestle anymore, but, um, I, I don't remember if I did get to wrestle her, but we were always, and like in Aaron Golson, we're always in that same, uh, like weight class, but I was thankful I didn't wrestle Aaron because I, she would have beat me up when I was young for sure. <laughs> yeah. I used to get my butt kicked by this kid, Jason Crosby all the time. So, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Um, I feel like the women's wrestling Twitter <laughs> world has done a real good job of using Twitter to really blow you guys up. If you think about some of the hottest tea per se in the wrestling world, um, and I thank you guys for that because it gives me a lot to cover, has been from the women's wrestling world. Uh, you know, you guys, the whole Mark Perry, Iowa situation, the women were pretty involved in that. And then this whole thing. So I think, you know, kudos to you guys for really – saying like if we're not going to get the coverage you guys are going out there and doing it yourself um i believe it's today you guys are doing the how she wrestles thing can you talk about that at all yes yeah, so that was actually started by julia salata and she'd kind of talked to a few of the athletes offline and then decided to pick like just 10 of us that we knew for sure we could get all 10 people to do it and then we're going to expand it every week and we're basically just like you said you know if they're not going to cover us we're going to cover us we're just going to tell our stories and um each week we have the game plan of telling um a different topic and so this week it's all 10 of us and it's like very random uh topics and i've heard some of the videos and i am completely like just in awe of them, there's some great stories, some that I knew already, but then to just get details on them, uh, super powerful. So I'm really excited for us all to push that out and then to see it develop. And hopefully we have uh, the collegiate, you know, the women and, and the rest of the national team participate, but it's been good. Like you said, you know, we are very active on Twitter, but we're so active behind the scenes. Like I, it was over, it was an overwhelming week because I've got like 10 different groups, you know, like 
of all this stuff that we're doing. And, you know, like there's some really great leadership within our community and to see how we're not just like, we're not just complaining about it. You know, we're, there's so much action going on behind the scenes and that's where I'm like, Oh, I can't wait for all this to start coming out because we have been working. Yeah. I love it. I think you guys are doing a great job. You got a lot of people interested. Can you talk about, is that going to be like in a podcast format or YouTube or written? So it'll be on our individual platforms on like Instagram or Twitter um, and then you can all, you can find everyone's video on the Instagram account and it's literally at how she wrestles. And so they'll be re reposting all of our stories. Pretty much if you use that hashtag, she, uh, Julia will repost those stories. And so that main page will have all that. Um, yeah. So that's, that's pretty much, I think it, and then I know we're all putting it on our individual channels and different social media. Cool. I'm looking forward to that. Um, so for the average wrestling fan, like I'll be the first to admit I am a big college wrestling fan. That's how I got into this. Um, I'm trying to get deeper into the wrestling world as I'm doing this. Um, we just started back in April. So I'm trying to learn not only the women's freestyle, but the men's freestyle as well and Greco. I'm trying to cover it all. But for the, av for the not average, but for the wrestling fan who's like, I only watch the Iowa Hawkeyes, you know what I'm saying? How do they... Who, what are some of the rivalries that you could say in the women's world? I know you guys, I know it's all love, but is there any like, you know, respectful rivalries or maybe not respectful rivalries in the, in the wrestling world that you, that, that like we can look forward to watching? Yeah. I mean, gosh, I think a lot of the weight classes are so deep. My personal favorite is 50 kilos. You know, my teammate returning world team member, uh, Whitney Connor, right? So she's like one of the older ones of that group, but then you have Sarah who just beat her for the wrestle off qualified the weight. Then you can't count out Victoria Anthony because she is a freaking bomb of a wrestler. So you literally can never count her out. And that's the same with all those girls in that weight class. And so those you would think are the top three. Oh, wait, there's more. Alyssa Lampy just what she pinned Victoria Anthony at the US Open. And so just when you think about the depth of that field, it's insane to me. Um, and there's always a rivalry between Victoria and Whitney Connor. You know, they've met two final axes in a row. So that is probably my personal favorite. I think, you know, like I'm biased. I'm going to say my weight class is pretty freaking stacked. You know, I, there's no doubt about it between me, Allie and Helen. Like there's a lot of, you know, in intensity there. It's the, the passion and the rivalry is there. And so I'm always excited for that. I'm always excited to wrestle any one of those girls. Um, and then, you know, let's see, that was 57 and 50. Um, Gosh, it's just, you know, Adeline, of course, who doesn't like to watch a hammer? And I always think like Precious Bell, she's like that next in line, you know, and she's always brings fire to every match that she wrestles. Cool. And then there's Mensa and Forrest. Yeah. Like that's already a great match too, because they're completely different human beings. And so that matchup makes me excited because their styles are so different and their mentalities are so different. So I personally, that's another one I'm excited to watch. Cool. Well, that gives us a lot of different storylines. I hopefully, you know, maybe some tea will come out and we'll have to just do some recap. But um, one more thing here before we wrap this up, uh, Kyle Klingman from Track Wrestling just wrote an article last Friday, I believe, where he said, what is Wrestling City USA? He put New York City in there. Do you, do they, is that deservedly so or am I being disrespectful? Oh man, Wrestling City USA. It's hard for me because I think what I saw, Iowa was like the main picture, right? I think I saw that. I don't know if I read the article, but I saw the picture. It's hard for me to say anything against Iowa because I competed there. And so they are just no jokes. Um, and so I know this goes against my own state because I'm from New York, but Iowa, I would say a lot of their regular fan base, even though they're there for the Hawkeyes, they know a lot about the senior anyone, or they just like, they know the level of intensity Like I was flying back from somewhere and someone saw my backpack and they're like, you're a wrestler. And I was like, yeah, I was like, I was on the world team. And they're like, Oh wait, you were on the world team with Metcalf in 14. And I was like, yeah. And they immediately were like, Oh snap. And so that's just something I don't necessarily see in New York. So I would probably, I mean, I would still stick with Iowa being like wrestling city USA. <laughs> Let's go. You know, I'm a big Iowa state fan. I don't know if you've seen any of our stuff. 
And uh, after that video went viral last week, we I had some of the Hawkeye fans because it got posted on the Hawkeye Report, and I was oh, excited about that. But I was like, they're gonna go back and see my old stuff <laughs> where I called them cowards, and uh, I don't know how they're gonna feel about it. But I will say that they're a passionate fan base. As much as I hate them, I love them because there's no place to watch wrestling like Carver Hawkeye Arena. I just it sucks to admit, but it is what it is, and uh, so I don't know. Uh, I hope that yeah. uh, I hope that they forgive me because I just said that. Hopefully they forgive me for that. Um, one last thing. I'm going <laughs> to wrap it up here. I'm new to the wrestling Twitter world. I'm trying to find out who I'm going to align myself with. You know, do you have any wrestling Twitter advice? You know, uh, the wrestling Twitter advice. Yeah. Um, what I really liked about your channel and what I've, um, I don't know if I'm breaking up on here, but what I, my wife and I just sat and we watched after that viral video kind of went out and then we just watched all of them. And I just like the kind of, I know your whole thing is like the tea of wrestling, but it's such like unbiased tea. So I have to, I have to say like my wife and I are like such fans because in the wrestling community, it's just so easy to get caught up in like making an alliance and like you are going to like die on that sword. And it's like, it's hard to find people that are just strictly putting out the information and like you do it in such a humorous way. So I feel like what you're doing is completely killing it. At least my, my family and I enjoy it. Yeah. So I would I say that. stick to what you're doing, especially that dry humor is key. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. And I uh, warm my heart to see myself as self observer this sound to, on your TV. I thought that was cool. I, you know, that was really dope. Um, thanks for coming on. We have a lot in common. Conor McGregor, the Joker, um, other stuff yeah. too that we'll leave out. But um, I appreciate you for coming on. I'm cheering for you. We're in your corner. Uh, you made my mom happy by coming on and doing this. Um, I'm going to try and find her. Or no. I'm gonna I'm gonna search who's retweeting you. <laughs> no, I, I mean she's not that hard to miss. To be honest, I, actually, she's my phone is blowing up right now from her. So, uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, hashtag how she wrestles, correct? Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yep. The Twitter, her Twitter, Jenna's Twitter is um, um at the Joker JB. At the Joker JB, Jenna Rose Burkett, Everybody.